The final and most crucial ingredient I need for my Thanksgiving dinner is turkey. But why does this bird, native to North America, share the name of a Middle Eastern country? At least 2,000 years ago, the indigenous Mesoamericans domesticated the wild turkey in what is now Mexico. When the Spaniards colonized this area, they brought these birds back with them to Europe. This American bird was confused with a similar looking East African guinea fowl, which was commonly imported through the country of Turkey. The confusion with the name and origin of the bird is widespread through various languages with names that suggest it came from India, France, Peru, or from the Dutch. The domesticated turkey quickly became widespread throughout Europe and was brought back with the English settlers when they colonized North America, despite the fact that a wild subspecies of turkeys already lived there. Despite access to turkeys, there's no solid record that the bird was even eaten at the original Thanksgiving dinner. However, since then, it has become the icon of the holiday, with over 46 million turkeys eaten each Thanksgiving in the US. For help getting my wild turkey, I turned to Don Elwanger, owner of American Heritage Hunting Club, for some assistance on hunting my own turkey. So I'm here at uh, turkey hunt. How does turkey hunting compare to like deer hunting or other types of hunting? Well, turkey hunts are always adventures. You yeah. never know quite what's gonna go on. It's never guaranteed. Turkeys yeah. are very, very tricky birds to hunt. Everybody, you know, we've, hunt, we've stalked them, we've crawled up on them, we've sat in blinds, any number of ways. The turkeys are in the woods somewhere. We've selected a place that looks like they've been coming through and hopefully one during the course of your adventure We'll get there. So you're gonna have to be as stealth as possible. Any extra movements and things are to your disadvantage. And okay. you need to shoot them in the head. Yeah. They have just huge bones and wings and mm -hmm. that's like body armor. Unless you're very close to them, it's just not gonna do much good. Are they pretty fast? Well, they're fast, but they're gonna disappear and hide on you like, oh, yeah. like a piece of bark. They are exceptionally good at hiding. And if they hear you, hearing is very, very good. You can't make much noise. There's no predicting where a turkey might come from. Okay. I mean, you can pick out an open area in which you hopefully the turkey will come through that you have a clearer shot at them, but mm -hmm. there is no predicting them. So these are wild turkeys? These are wild turkeys. Do you know how that is different from a domestic turkey? Well, they're quite a bit different. They are, they are not nearly as full-breasted, mm -hmm. and uh, the meat is much uh, more moist, a little more dark meat, than, okay. but they still get some lighter breast meat, but it's yeah. more dark meat. The wild turkey isn't taste quite as good as the domestic ones. No, it's the other way around. The wild turkey oh. tastes better than the oh, domestic okay. one. <laughs> At least in my opinion. Before the hunt, Don made sure I knew how to use a shotgun. Today you're going to be using a pump shotgun, 12 gauge. We're going to be using fine shot. Okay, when your safety is here, take the safety off. Here comes your turkey. Hit him right in the head. And that was a dead turkey. First kill of the day. We're gonna get you walking down through the woods and you will get the blind you've set up previously back there for you. You take and follow the deer trail down to the, where the blind is, get in, and know you can make a couple times with the call, see if something happens, and then you gotta be really patient. Don't fall asleep. Sl <laughs> sleeping is permitted, but yeah. you don't see much with the eyes closed. <laughs> yeah. All right? All right. And then it'll be just good luck. Got him. It looks like I got him in the head. So a good, clean shot, I hope. I think this is just the adrenaline in its system. Yeah, heard a couple of them. One yeah. miss? Yeah, I think I hit him with both. Pretty looking bird. Yeah, will be a dandy one in the oven. <laughs> so is he, is he dead or? Oh, he's dead, yeah. Okay, so that's just. Shot. Just the adrenaline that's making him flap? Yeah, that's just, okay. you hit him in the head and he just, he's right where you're supposed to. Good, Good. Job. Should be no pellets in the meat. Now we gotta Good. process him. Yeah. Are you into that? I've done a chicken before. Well, this is just a really big chicken. Uh, okay. Oh, we'll take it back to the cleaning room and we'll pluck him all up and make him look pretty. Okay. 
And you got to do the cooking. <laughs> when we get done with this, we're gonna we'll get him all plucked out. You can you'll be ready to go to the roasting pan. One, one feather at a time. Because <laughs> they pull really hard. Yeah. Until you get the you get one out, then they go easy. <sighs> Once plucked, we brought the bird inside and Don and singed it with a blowtorch to remove the remaining feathers. Mm, smells like burnt hair. He then quickly processed the bird. All right, so I got the last ingredient for my Thanksgiving dinner, the turkey, thanks to Don. It's a uh, whole hunting experience was pretty intense. Bit of an adrenaline rush, just waiting for that turkey and pretty nervous that it, if it was or wasn't gonna actually happen. So I was glad I actually ended up with a turkey and Thanksgiving was saved. Let's go cook the turkey. So back in the kitchen now after a hunt, I got my turkey. This is the last ingredient for a Thanksgiving dinner. So butter it up, put a little salt to help season it and then add the stuffing. Let's do it. So I got the turkey stuffed now, so I'm going to find the legs, then cover it, and throw it in the oven for three to four hours. While the turkey bakes, I'll take the leftover giblets from the turkey and start a broth. Now we've had this boiling for about 30 minutes. We got a nice broth going. It smells pretty good. Now we can start using this to baste the turkey, and then from the drippings of the turkey, we'll make the actual gravy. But for something to put my gravy on, I used some leftover potatoes I'd grown in my garden. I first boiled the potatoes, then mashed them with some of my goat milk and butter. Meanwhile, my turkey was just about done. So for the last half hour, I'm gonna take off the covering. And in the meantime, I'm gonna get the gravy started. So for that, I'm just gonna take some of the drippings. Add a little bit of flour. And now I gotta simmer it back on the stove. Mmm, that's really good. Very rich. You can definitely taste the turkey in it. To help thicken the gravy, I added some more of my goat's milk. Well, this is it. After all the hard work, we can finally sit down and eat the fruits of my labor. We have the wild turkey that I shot, acorn bread stuffing made from acorns in Michigan. We have the cranberry sauce that I made from cranberries I dove headfirst in, in Wisconsin for. We have the gravy that I made using turkey drippings, and we have the potatoes from my garden. Well, let's dig in. <laughs> 